challenge. We're at the top of the South Island, New Zealand. It's the middle of winter, and I'm going to Crazy Horse Island. My life jacket stays here until the boat picks me up. This is the only other stuff I've got with me on this trip. Uh, Galaxy Ultra S22, which I'm filming with and currently filming with. Uh, GoPro, a couple of spare batteries that are full. A charge unit gives me about 20 charges. And my toothbrush and also the glasses I'm wearing. That's it. The GoPro, I'm going to switch on so you can see what's going on there. And you can see the uh, tripod that I'm filming with as well. I saw some rainbow here. It rained a lot last night. It's been raining for the last five or six days. That means that the forest floor will be wet. Hard to make a fire. But the positive is there'll be plenty of water. And we'll find it. I'll show you how to get it from the forest floor when we get in there. They look like little men running along with black raincoats on. Oyster catchers. Don't know if you can see that, but that's a stingray coming up. And if he came in close enough, I could spear it. It's quite deep on the other side, and he's keeping away from me. But it's doable. I need to make a spear. I've never, never heard that noise before. I must be sleeping under there. Yeah, I'm not going to disturb it. Just came out, there he goes. Just in there, look. I can see you, mate. It's a wicker. It is a wicker. Big pine trees. They'd be full of resin. It's a fuel in itself. Oh, yes. This is good. This is good. This is a food source right here. A slippery jack mushroom. Something's had a wee bite of it, but there's plenty of food in that, and hopefully we can find more on the island. Right, we need fresh water now. I've walked right around the island. Has anybody seen where the water is? Some of you might be thinking it's in the trees and vines I could cut, and you'd be right if we we're in a different forest, but this is pine and manuka and totara, but actually it's right at our feet. I'll show you. It's right through the forest floor, and not that grass that you're looking at. Yes, that's got water on it too, but it's underneath it, and that sphagnum moss, and it's prolific. There's heaps of it, and this is why the native plants grow so well, because they constantly are hydrated. Even when there's no rain, it's in that moss there. All this green forest floor is covered in it. First of all, I just want to give this a wipe to get my seawater out. I learnt this trick when I used to hunt in the mountains with my dogs up high. And there was no water for them. And I would take the moss and I would do just this. And look at that. Plentiful. Plentiful. What I'm hopeful is this is not going to be salty. Because if it is, I'm stuffed. Oh, it is fresh, it's really good. Basic shelter would be one long piece of wood like this, and then two crossed over like this, holding it up like that there, with logs going down one side like this, and then we would make it so the water can't come through with wood first, then bark, and then we'd fill the gaps with moss, and you'd have your feet there. That would be a shelter for a very cold climate because you want to keep it small as you can, and you just crawl into that. Today, I'm looking for trees that have got branches, and that broke, that doesn't matter. So say you've got a branch out here, and you've got a branch out there maybe. And what I do is I put a piece of wood between like that, and then I can put my shelter from there. And because it's not so cold, I've got plenty of room to move around inside there. It's uh, hard work for an old man to gather logs. This is what I've got so far. This is Manuka. And what we're going to use is we're going to use this bark to make our roof waterproof. Strip it right round. I'm doing this without any tools, just my fingers. New Zealand has a poisonous spider called the Karapo, and it lives in these logs by the beach. But it is pretty nasty if it bites you. Here we go. Beautiful bark.
give it a good pile of bark, but I'm going to need a lot more. And I'm going to start at the bottom, that way the water will run off the next layer. I'm going to put each layer on like that, and overlap the layers that go above it like so, so it drips down all the way. Hopefully this uh, batten system is going to keep our, uh, our bark from flying away in the wind. Check all this out. This is my mattress. Can hardly fit it in the hut. Going to keep me well off the ground. And there's plenty of it. Keep you well insulated in winter. Previous primitive challenge, a few of you have asked about my clothes I'm wearing. It's Mick Lagarde. And you can get it from me. And you'll get a 10% discount if you do get it from me if you use the link in the description box below. So there you go if you want it. It's waterproof, fireproof, and it keeps you bloody warm at night. Guys, I'm only seven kilometers from my home. This is close to civilization. Of course, I can call any time I need to come out of here. This is a survival exercise, not a true survival. But you will hopefully gain some uh, ideas and ways how to survive if you find yourself ever in a survival situation. This is a big fire pit where someone's had a fire at some stage. It's been dug out, and it's actually quite good because... I might better get some ash, I'll have a scratch around here and see what we can find. But ash, you can make a fire if you mix ash with other stuff. I'm just going to have a dig around in here. This uh, charcoal, we can grind that down and use that. It's actually quite, quite, that there's a power shell. Now that there's not natural to the island. Someone's actually eaten power on the island, they've died for it. And this is a valuable thing because that straight away is a bowl and I use those. Look at this. We might even find another one. If there's one here, we might find more. We'll keep looking. Not to say we are going to, but that's actually valuable, that. I'm taking that right now. Man, let's see. You can hold water in that. You can use it for making a fire, and you can even boil water in that. That's a great find straight away. So what I'm looking for is the stuff that's in the tree. It's already got the sunlight on it this morning. It started to dry after the night's rain. What I want to hear is a crack like that. If you don't hear that crack, it's too moist. So this is a good, we we'll gather enough of this. This is a bit of flax, it's dried out. And what I want is these tiny little fibres. And you can see that, lots of them. And each fibre, we're gonna make it into a wee ball if we can. So I'm just gonna break this down and see what we can do. And I don't know why I'm not wearing my glasses because uh, without them I'm a blind old man. I'm talking that sort of fine. That's what you want. I keep on rubbing that like that. It's starting to look like this now. Now I've uh, made fire many ways and if you're on this island and you didn't have glasses your best bet would be a bow drill. I could have done it but this video is for the average bloke. The average bloke my age has got glasses. Uh, I've made plenty of uh, fire in other videos so you can see how to do it but this is your best bet. And to be honest in a primitive situation you don't really want to be doing it in the winter time if you can help it. This is how I'm going to transport it. Lucky for me my jacket is fireproof. It can handle a fair bit of fire, as you can tell. This is what they use in uh, Sweden, in the fire brigade. It's a pretty hot pine cone there. This is where I'm going to be making my fire. So, it's going to clear a bit of a patch. This ground is so damp. I'm going to smack a bit of this down. 
my pine cone on that and that's where I'm going to have my fire. I was really hopeful to find oysters to eat but all of these oysters are pretty much eaten. They've been taken. Maybe this one here is edible. Mm. Doesn't look hopeful does it? Looks like mud. Just shell. Yeah they're all like this. Low tide and I've got a good feed of mussels here. Heaps. Yum. Up by my hut I've got a mate here. That's what we call a bush hen. That's a wecker. And a wecker tastes absolutely delicious. It's a mixture of chicken and pork. However, on the mainland here we're not allowed to eat them. And it's a good thing. But I have eaten them on the Chatham Islands. G'day mate, he's right by my hut. G'day. How you doing, eh? Got any eggs around? I think I'm going to call you Wilson. Okay? You're my uh, island mate. Well, there's more slippery jacks here too. Thinking something's been already having it, and I'm going to guess it was uh, Wilson, the, the whacker. Add that to my pile. And this one here. Quite a bit that's uh, been eaten, but still, there's plenty for us. In preparation for eating our mushrooms, first thing I want to do is I want to take the, the skin off the outside. It's the inside, but we're going to eat. It's really important you know what wood you're skewering your food with. Some woods have poisoned people. Mm. They're really tasty. If your fire's not going very well and you want to get some oxygen to it, rather than going make your fingers into a square like this. It was colder than I thought it would be last night. Pretty, uh, pretty cold night. That was a very average sleep, but a, a sleep and shelter and no dew on me, this kept me dry last night. Well, I was hopeful I was gonna catch some fish yesterday, and I didn't, and I only had some mushrooms to eat and a few mussels, not much, so hopefully we catch a fish this morning. I want to get this sharp enough that it can spear a flounder. I'm not going to put a barb in. I'm just going to hopefully spear it and hold it down then put my hand underneath it when I take the flounder out. That's the plan anyway. That's pretty sharp. That's pretty good. I thought that was an eel at first, it's just a bit of flax. It's the middle of winter right now in New Zealand, there's snow in the mountains, so I don't know how cold it is, but it was about zero degrees last night. Getting some cold on your feet seems to somehow warm the rest of your body, I don't know how that works, maybe someone can explain. This native here looks like it's blowing down in the storm. We can certainly use this. It's uh, not long been down either, but looks like he's on a way out, as you can see by the leaves, it's, it is dying. That's to make our tie. I've just put these five bits together and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bind them here with the flax. I'm holding that in there tight and pull that up like so. Putting it through the split 
and down like that to tighten it up. Split that piece again and put a piece around either side, tying an overhand and then another one making it into a reef knot like that. And we're putting a third one on here which I'm just tying off now. These massive big pine trees all around and they are a source of resin, which is a fuel in itself. The shell of a cicada, they come out in February. But what I'm looking for is pine sap on this big tree here. And here it is right here. This is like gold. This tree has an absolute abundance of pine sap. Look in there. It's starting to soften up now. I don't want to overcook it and I don't want to break the shell. I just want to get it soft enough that I can put it onto my pine cone. It's, it smells divine. I've taken it off the main heat and just enough heat in the shell to, to break that down. Beautiful. I'm going to add just a little bit of charcoal. This is going to add like a binding agent and also help it burn better. This could be used as a glue or it could be used as something that is a burning agent. Give that a good stir up. It's really good now. I'll get my pine cone and start filling it up with this stuff like this. By putting the pine pitch in here, the pine cone will burn for about five times as long. You'll get about eight to ten minutes sometimes even 12 or 15 depending on how much you put in there and I'm going to do quite a few pine cones like this take your pine pitch and just keep it stored on a stick like this for use later on it goes hard pretty quick that's gone hard now it's quite malleable too so you can shape it to things you want you can make a small container that could hold water that's my first one I've got I don't know maybe another eight nine to do I want to have plenty so I've got plenty of light tonight and here I've got my torch holder and Eventually these will burn down and you just move the flax down and keep on using it So that's why you make them quite long so you've got plenty to go uh, This is my first pine cone going in which I'll be taking tonight Just sits in here like that You hold it and when it's burnt down you stick another pine cone in I'll have the fire on the beach so I can charge the pine cones and fish right beside where my fire is There's a lot of, I'll just pan around and show you where I am here I'll go in a big pan and you'll see over here where I'll be fishing tonight Right from this uh, point over here, right through along here, there's fish all along there. That's where we go. I've lit in this fire on the beach where I'm going to be fishing, so I can charge my torch each time that I've made with pine cones drenched in pine pitch. Oh, it's freezing. Just missed a bloody flounder. This is the third torch I'm on. They're burning pretty good. Visibility's clear in the water, but just so difficult. Oh, the sun will be up soon. Well, last night I didn't catch any fish, and I tried for ages, and it was freezing cold, and I lost a lot of energy. So tonight it's a full moon, and the... The weather looks fantastic to catch a fish, so I'm holding on to that hope that I can spare one. I've got to make a whole lot more pine cones and more fuel because I burned all my fuel last night, so I've got to go and gather resin. And hopefully tonight we can uh, change it and catch a fish because it is, it's completely doable. I just need luck to be on my side. It's not much because I'm not eating much. It's something we've all got to do. So I take a little bit of ash out of the fire and I cover my business up. I'll be using this the whole time I'm here. And eventually I'll cover it right back up and you won't even know it was there. As a rule generally, the flounder come on the outside of the channel as the tide comes in and as the tide goes out they're in the middle of the channel. So, as the tide's coming in tonight, that's our chance to maybe spare one because they come in very shallow. And this is a muddy bottom here, and every estuary in New Zealand just about has flounder in it. And it's a great food source. Spearing them is easy, they lie there. If you get a light on them, they'll lie there and you can actually spear them. They don't move, they're not difficult to get. And if you've ever speared flounder, you know what I'm talking about. Fix my GoPro to the front of my spear in the hopes if I do get a flounder, or an eel, or something, then it'll capture it. Probably normally would have had it back further, but it kept on slipping. Just 
just perfect. Nice muddy bottom. What we're looking for is a sort of a diamond shaped fish. They just sit there. And tonight there's not a ripple on the top of the water. This is what we want. This is probably as good a condition as I could ask for. Last night I saw three. Just gonna keep on going. Right here, I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to put this guy over his misery. <sighs> Some of you say don't uh, do that, use a rock. There's no rocks around here. And I've already dropped one in the path when I've been out floundering and just kill him. Oh, shit. He's a beauty. Well, I have actually killed him, but he's still breathing. But his head, they don't die easy, do they? I'm pretty sure it's just nerves. Yeah. That has given out some heat. Oh, I've never had such a feeling of satisfaction. You can probably hear Wilson. He's just by the campfire here, hanging around me. And, uh, well, two fish tonight. Uh, one that I got on film and one I didn't because the GoPro shit itself. But we've got two for tomorrow so tomorrow is going to be a cool day it's uh, pretty awesome pretty awesome to be that hungry and i'm not going to eat it now because too late and i'm cold and i want to go to bed but i'm going to cook that tomorrow morning and uh, i don't like having a lot of food when i go to sleep i sleep better without it but i can wait till the morning so that's really that's i'm excited and that's where we got it just out there straight out there's where we got our flounder and where's wilson gone where are you wilson don't you get too close to that fire, otherwise you'll be roast Wilson. I had a bit of a sleep in this morning, the sun's already up, and I'm excited because I've got food to eat. So with a flounder, the spine is on the top, there where the eyes are. And the belly's on the bottom where it's soft here. That's where you gut it. And let's see how we go with our, our knife, which is not really a knife, but just a piece of stone. Once we get a hole in, we can make a line. Oh, there's a bit coming out where I speared him. That's enough though. And we can just push that up like this. It's gonna come out. We'll get a finger in there. This guy has not got a lot in, inside him. There we go that save that for a fish trap or something that's pretty much the belly of the flounder little crabs and shells there's a wee tiny crab there and they park over the, the hole and they suck them up look there's all the wee feet of the crab he's been feeding on we've got kahawai feeding on small fish in here you can see them rising gonna let this burn down so we've got some nice hot embers to do our flounder on I'm gonna get all the sand off as I can. That's where the spear got him there, so it was uh, almost a kill shot, that one. This manuka makes it really nice flavor to the fish. We often use it to smoke fish. We can lay it on a bit of that, and uh, the heat will get underneath, a bit of air rope. We get that nice smoke coming up through the fish. It'd be absolutely delicious. That's cooking nicely in the embers there. We look in there, put my brush down, put them on top of that brush. Oh yeah, it is well and truly cooked, look at that, beautiful yellow, not even slightly burnt, the brush has done the job, and we've got nice hot smoked flounder, perfect. Oh, that's tough. That's a bird bone. That's what I wanted. Oh, this meal has been so long. Now, I've done a lot of fasting in my life. I had three years of eating just one meal a day. I'm dribbling while I'm trying to say this to you guys. But fasting is one thing. But when you're working all the time in cold water and you're doing stuff just to survive, literally, and you've got nothing but uh, the 
what nature around offers you. And when you finally eat something like this, oh, that is perfect. That's perfect smoked. Delicious. You really, really appreciate it. Massive big splash over there. I think it's that eagle ray. If we can get that, we got ourselves a feed. Gotta grab the spear. Just grab it up here somewhere that's on the beach. We gotta stick it oh, over here. I don't have time to get my GoPro. It's charging and it's not been going very well, so we'll see how we go. I'll be filming this and also spearing at the same time, which is not going to be easy because I've got to hold this bloody phone. Oh, so here we go. I don't fancy my chances, but if I get him, he's a meal. He's a meal and a half. Oh, here he comes, up in here. Oh, he's a big boy. He's a big boy. Oh, I just cut my foot on a shell end. These guys have a brutal sting. I've uh, come close to being stung quite a few times. Here he is. Once he sees me, he's probably going to leg it. I don't want to get stung, but I do want to get him. Here he is here. Oh. I'm getting closer. Oh, he's a big, big stingray. Once he sees me, he's going to leg it. Got him! Oh, I got him. I got him. Oh, I can get him on the beach. He's big. Oh, oh he's a monster. Well, it looks like we've got stingray to eat. That's a big lot of food right there. That's a lot of food. And uh, just with a a stick like that. Any movement you see is just nerves. These guys are full of nerves. I have completely stonked him on the head with a rock. Wilson's eating the remains that's come out of the bottom of the stingray. You like that Wilson, eh? Need a shard to come off this. Oh, that's such tough stone. Ah, we've broken it, and it's and it's sharp. That's it there, there's our knife right there, finally, and it's a nice piece to hold. Right, let's start on our stingray, here we go. There we go, there's the barb. This here can kill an orca, kill a whale. A female washed up on the beach with one, and it would pierce through the heart. This is also what killed legend Steve Irwin. They're deadly. I've cut it off now so I can work on the flesh. The stingray itself... They get hunted for their livers and they wash up on the beaches in great droves. Oh yeah, that cuts good. Oh, just nerves. Cuts really good. To get this wing off here. No knife, no problem. Fantastic, look at the flesh. Being winter, I can keep this fish good for a few days. 
must be on one night. There we go. Then we'll get the uh, cadmium layer in the back off. My stomach is rumbling to eat that stingray. I thought I was going to have to go out tonight and get cold again and spare flounder, but no such. Sometimes you've got to have some luck, eh, in life. I want to just keep on going until it goes sort of a white. This is a life, boys. It's like crayfish. I'm going to cut the rest up and hang it so that Wilson can't get it tonight. Mmm. Yeah, turn to that. It's fantastic. You're going to love it. You've already got a bit on your beak, so I think you've already been into it. Mmm. Don't say I don't spoil you. The skin of the stingray is a valuable asset to have. We can use it to make all sorts of things. And I think for me, it's going to be a bowl or something in hold water. the underbelly of the eagle ray that I've taken off the skin. This is the tough part of it. This is what you want to use if you're making something. It's uh, very, very tough and you can stretch it quite far. Don't use the top. I've made chunks of flesh like this to break it down. I'm probably going to smoke it with, not sure yet. Uh, eagle rays are plentiful. They are the least concerned as far as endangered species go. There are many of them and it's quite sustainable to kill them. And there's a lot of meat in them, as you can see. This is the uh, other side of what the skin looks like. And we can't do much with that really, other than just use it to protect the uh, flesh before we flesh it out for smoking or cooking, whatever we're going to do. And it's got this really black stuff that you, you get on your fingers all the time, it's quite messy. I've broken some bits off and just made them into sort of rings like this. And I want to make a tie. I've had this piece here and what I've done is I've just gone like this with it, sort of tied it into a knot like that. And just left it for a while to allow the wood to sort of get that shape naturally so when you undo it it stays like it like that that's the first stage second stage is with a bit of uh, flax I want to tie this up basically you want to make a loop like this just to uh, start the a simple loop like that make a slip knot in one end like so pull that up tight and then start the tying process when we get to almost the end what we do is we split that there like this in half and we put one underneath and one on the top. Going around there, we can tie these off with a reef knot like so. It's going to go here on the ground and another one the other way. I can hear paradise ducks flying over the island. It's the second one that I've already made. Keeping it really tight just to start with. It's got to be tight. Okay, pretty rough. It's taken me about three quarters of an hour to make this much so far. Now we're going to tidy this up and put our skin on it. These can go. Keep it nice and tidy. I've got this uh, sort of pattern going around the outside, a bit like a drum, just securing each piece of the skin where the sticks come down. And I'm almost ready to put my weight in to put it to the bottom. We can say we've done all of them. The wickers can't get up into this tree because they don't fly. And this rock is going to bring that skin right down. Take the inside piece right there. That's what I want. And we're going to plug it just like that. And we're going to test it with some salt water. No, it's not leaking. Staying in. Good. You can actually see through the hole there, but it's not leaking out. It's uh, working good. Uh, I don't know how much it's holding. Possibly almost a litre. If we went to the top. Well, we've had rain uh, the first night. And we're going to get rain tonight too, probably. So we'll put it out and test it.
If you're a hunter, particularly a pig hunter, you'll know that sows often have their piglets under flax because it's waterproof and the runoff keeps them dry and that's what I've done here. Now we've got some water, not full as I would like. The water's a premium here so we'll take what we can get. At least it's a bit fresher than squeezing out moss and if I was staying here long term I'd probably make a setup like this a bit more elaborate with more uh, skin. Wilson! Wilson! Hey come back with that! Bloody Wilson! Put it with the rest up here. Keep away from it mate, it's not for you, don't touch. My pine cones are burnt down, we've got these nice hot embers and that's what I want to do my fish. Drive manuka on top like this here, where the fish is on it, it will smoke instead. And we're sort of doing like a hot smoke on this, putting it on there like that. that there. It's the opposite to planking fish, if you've ever seen fish cooked planking styles. That's where you cook the fish on a piece of wood and burn it. This way here we've got the wet wood on top and the smoke getting trapped in it. It's a poor man's smoker and it works really well. Let's put moss on that there. Beautiful, smoking lovely. I can tell you guys the smell coming off that is absolutely superb. It smells like it's gonna be bloody good chewing. This has had probably longer than it should have had. Now we're gonna see what it's like. The bark's starting to catch fire and hopefully we're good. Oh, we might have overcooked it a bit, eh? I think I've overcooked this a little bit. Yeah, a wee bit burnt. It is hot smoke, but anyway. There's nothing wrong with that. Mmm, no, that's delicious. Yum. Your wife over there, uh, Wilson, I can see. She's in the background there, eh? Is that your wife over there? I can see her just over there sneaking around. A bit shy, eh? Plenty of rain last night, everything's wet here. Offering a lot of water. I'm going to smoke the last bit of a stingray that uh, I put aside, and the rest I'm taking home to feed friends and family. I'm calling the boat in today. The New Zealand Eagle Ray is of the least concern to the conservation department because they're so plentiful. They are a food source to the orca, they eat their uh, livers. I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, you've gained something from it yourself. It was an exercise just to showcase the things you can do without taking anything in the clothes you're wearing. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next video. And be good, if you can't be good be careful and hit the subscribe button if you like the content and you'll get more of it. Oh yeah if you want to support and see more of these to help me make them jump on my Patreon and get the inside scoop. Alright cheers. Here comes my ride. Awesome, absolutely awesome. Yeah, fantastic. And I bought you some fish too. That's for your dinner. Hey, thanks for picking us up.